We already introduced you to co-composting for fecal sludge treatment. This is a relatively slow process and to produce compost may not always have a high market value. In this module we'll introduce you to two new processes called vermi and fly composting that have the potential to be quicker and produce treatment products with a higher market value, such as the black folger fly shown behind me. Following this module, you will be able to explain the treatment process and operation of vermi and fly larvae composting, name advantages and disadvantages that these processes can have over co-composting, and discuss important considerations for the implementation. Vermi and fly larvae composting are processes that use worms and flies for sludge stabilization and nutrient management, in addition to microorganisms used in co-composting. Vermi and fly larvae composting are two processes that are currently being researched and piloted for fecal sludge. Currently the knowledge for fecal sludge is limited to few laboratory, bench scale and pilot scale studies and most research has been conducted with feces. Feces can have very different characteristics to fecal sludge collected from pit latrines and septic tanks. Vermi and fly larvae composting processes are being transferred to fecal sludge from the treatment of organic solid waste such as market waste or restaurant waste or manures. For these wastes, more knowledge and a few examples of full-scale implementation exist. Wormy composting, which is also called warm composting, uses worms for sludge stabilization. Worms that have been used with fecal sludge include Isenia fetida, which is also called tiger worms or red wiggler, and Eudrilius eugenia, which is also called the African nightcrawler. With organic solid waste, Lubricus rubellus is also common. These worms are selected for vermi composting because they can survive, grow, feed and reproduce on a variety of different feedstocks and they grow very quickly. This is a picture of Isenia fetida. If you would like to do vermi composting and you need worms, you will likely find them in manures or compost. Once placed on a feedstock such as fecal sludge, worms start to feed on it to meet the energy needs, grow and reproduce. Anything that the worms do not take up during this digestion process in their gut, they will poop out as a solid residual that we call vermicompost. Operation of vermicomposting is commonly in batch or semi-batch. This means that worms are fed once with fecal sludge or with smaller batches every day. Under favorable environmental conditions, worms will directly reproduce within the waste and need to be separated from the residue after fecal sludge has been processed into vermicompost. This picture shows such a batch process at a research facility in the Philippines. In these rectangular boxes, a mixture of manure, shredded cornstarch and feces are being vermicomposted with Arsenia fetida. Three studies in Mexico, the Philippines and India assessed vermicomposting of fecal sludge collected from septic tanks and feces. These studies highlight that worms require bedding material for proper development. In India, Worms do not live in feces without a bedding on period material placed below the feces, such as soil or compost. In vermicomposting of organic solid waste, paper and cardboard are also commonly used. Worms also did not feed and survive on untreated sludge, but required fecal sludge that was pre-digested. The research also identified that high ammonia concentration in fecal sludge can be toxic to worms and hamper their development. Let's move to another fascinating animal used in fecal sludge treatment, the black soldier fly. The black soldier fly can be found in most temperate and tropical climates. In comparison to other flies, it has a benefit it does not feed during its adult life. This means it will likely not move between different wastes and sit on waste. They could contain pathogens and transmit them throughout the environment, which could transmit diseases. In waste treatment, black soldier flies are usually reared in cages as shown here at a pilot scale facility in Nairobi. In these cages, flies are kept in conditions that foster mating between male and female flies. Following mating, female flies like to lay their eggs at protected place. To provide such an environment, treatment operators commonly provide perforated cardboard to lay their eggs as shown here. This picture shows the eggs following removal from the cardboard. On this picture, you can see a few million eggs. Under favorable environmental conditions, within the next three days, a few million small larvae with a size of around one millimeter will hatch from these eggs and hungry for food. Once placed on an organic waste feedstock, such as fecal sludge, the larvae will start processing this waste for the next weeks to meet their energy needs and grow. As they do not feed during their adult life as a fly, 
they have a really big appetite during their life stage as a larvae. This video shows the black soldier for a larvae feeding on feces during research in Uppsala in Sweden. Based on bench and pilot scale testing in Sweden, Thailand and Kenya with feces and fecal sludge from septic tanks, fly level can reduce the mass of sludge during this period by between 40 to 50% based on dry weight. The feeding of fly larvae with waste such as fecal sludge is commonly done in boxes and larvae are fed either once or every few days. The boxes and the feeding are shown here at a treatment facility in China where restaurant waste is treated with black soldier fly larvae. Based on research in Sweden and Kenya, black soldier fly larvae commonly convert between 10 to 20% of the sludge based on dry weight into body mass. This factor is called the bioconversion rate. In other words, it means that following the processing of 1000 kg of total solids, around 100 to 200 kg of dried larvae can be expected. Are you excited about fly larvae and vermicomposting? Here are some important considerations that are relevant for its implementation. As with other biological processes such as co-composting that rely on living organisms, worms and fly larvae will only feed, grow and reproduce if suitable environmental conditions are being provided. In short, keep your worms and fly larvae happy. For example, both fly larvae and worms do not like light and should be kept in a shaded place. They also like environments with sufficient supply of oxygen and pH, temperature and humidity are important environmental factors. The available literature on the two processes with organic solid waste and fecal sludge suggests that its performance is really depending on feedstock characteristics, microorganisms, environmental conditions and treatment operation and can be really variable. It is therefore best to determine these parameters through local bench and pellet scale tests before upscaling. In this module we will introduce you to vermi and fly larvae composting, two new processes that are currently in research and being implemented with fecal sludge at a bench and pilot scale. In these processes, worms and fly larvae feed on fecal sludge and produce animal protein that has a higher market value than compost. Based on our current level of knowledge, the two processes achieve lower levels of pathogen inactivation in comparison to co-composting and the compost and worm and larvae products require further treatment. 